Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and my craft table. So glad you could join me today for installment four of my Cricut Summer Series. Today's project is a shirt that we're going to be putting some HTV vinyl on and a really cool summer graphic that I've put together using Design Space. For this project, you will need a shirt and I believe I got this one at Michael's. I have a sheet of iron-on HTV vinyl, and I believe this particular one came from Expressions Vinyl, and it's like a shimmery, deep turquoise blue color. I just love it. It reminds me of a summer lake. And I've got scissors, measuring tape, weeding tool, grip mat, and I will be using my Easy Press 2, so I will also need my pressing mat and a lint roller. Let's go ahead and hop into Design Space and check out the design that we're putting on our shirt today. Here in Design Space, I have pulled up several things for us already in order to uh, be more efficient with our time today. So the first thing that I have done is I've gone over to Templates and I have scrolled down until I have reached the um, V-neck t-shirt template. And by the way, you can always turn the template off and turn it back on using this little icon down here in your layers panel. You can change the type of shirt and the size of the shirt, and you can also change the color. So it's just a matter of what your preferences are. You may also come over here to this little bitty box um, up here in the top left, and you can toggle that and you can get no grid, a large grid, and tiny grids. Okay, so I have already made a design um, earlier and I wanted to make sure that it worked for what I'm doing today based on my vision. And so I actually have the elements right here and I'm gonna show you how I made them. So this is what the shirt will look like when we're done. And I actually think I might come in here and change this to like that bluish color so you can kind of get an idea of what it'll look like when we're finished. So this is what it'll look like when we're done pressing the um, vinyl to the shirt. Okay, so as far as the design is concerned, I went into images and I just searched for adventure. And there are so many designs that you could come up with. And I pulled this particular one. Um, there were some others that were similar, but I really like the big bold letters of this particular design. So I chose this one. The next thing that I did, and actually I think I'm going to turn off the template simply because it'll be out of our way while we are designing. The next thing that I did, this is the design as, as we bring it into the canvas, is I wanted a frame around it because the idea that I had would be to have some mountains underneath. Okay, so kind of like this, and I wanted to put a box around all of this and tie it all together. So I went over to my shapes, um, menu over here and I pulled a couple of rectangles. So this particular design is seven, a rough, roughly seven by eight and my mountains are about two and a half by one and I'm just giving rough estimates. You can see that they're a little bit um, different. And then I have a rectangle that is approximately eight by ten and then I chose another rectangle, and so almost eight by, well, let's say seven and three quarters by nine and three quarters. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place these two on top of each other, and I will be using this to create the box that goes around my word adventure. This particular box right here, I will be using to slice out the area where the mountains will sit so that they're not um, obscured by the frame. So I'm gonna select both of these boxes, go to align, and I'm gonna hit align center. 
And then now you have a couple of options. You can do slice. We have two layers and I literally can just slice them out, pull off the ones I don't want and delete them. The other thing you can do is you can go to combine and then hit subtract. And when you do that, it will actually already slice it out and get rid of it for you. Okay. And then you'll see here in your layers menu that you still have the two squares, but they've just kind of gotten rid of all of that for you. And then what I like to do is while it is still selected, I like to go to combine and you can hit merge layers and that will make it one particular image like this. Okay, so that was going to combine and subtract. It pulled it out for me, didn't have to move anything or delete. And then I went back to combine and I hit merge layers. So now I have this box right here and I'm gonna kind of just move it right like so. In fact, let me make this a little bit bigger. Well, okay, there we go. That's a good size. So you can see that I now have my frame around my words, okay? And I do want to, for right now, I'm just gonna do center horizontally. If I did center vertically, it would move the adventure down vertically as well, but I want to be able to have room for my mountains. Now there's a couple of things that you can do. You can slice out this section right here, which is what we are gonna do, but you can then uh, weld the mountains to the frame, or you can weld the mountains to the um, bottom of the adventure. Okay, so either way, you can get that to go the way you want. So I'm gonna put this right here. I don't know why I moved that. I think I was already getting ahead of myself. Let me recenter that horizontally. Okay, and then my, move it up a little bit. Okay, so when we're done, it'll look like this. And my mountains will be here. But this is what I mentioned earlier. I don't want the mountains to be obscured by the line or have the line be in the way of the design. So I'm gonna move these mountains kind of out of the way and I'm gonna bring in this box right here. All right, and then I'm going to select the mountains and the frame and I want to center horizontally. And while they're both selected, I want to go ahead and I'll show you the slice feature since I already showed you the subtract feature. If you want to use the slice feature, you go to slice, you have to have two layers, and then you literally just pull away what you want to keep and what you don't want to keep. And I don't want to keep any of this, so I will get rid of these things right here. Okay, so now I'm left with my frame and it has a little spot for my mountains. So then I can bring my mountains over here. And like I said, I can put them, I can make sure that my mountains and my word are centered horizontally. So there we go. And I do like the spacing, okay? Um, if you wanted to, you could make the mountains be a little bit closer to the R. It really is up to you. But just before you attach them, go ahead and do center horizontally. And then I like to do a weld. And the weld means that I will not be able to undo any of this. The adventure and the mountains will be permanently um, attached to each other. If you are not wanting to permanently attach them uh, forever, then you would do the attach feature. And that just means you could move the mountains out at any time that you wanted to. So you could do weld or you could do attach. Okay, so I just did attach in case I ever want to change this to a lake or a, maybe an airplane or kind of whatever I wanted to put it on. You could put a kayak on there. So this is ready to go. This would be a great um, gift uh, for someone. You could do a mug, a shirt, bags. Um, you could do a wall decor. I could just all day long come up with ideas for this particular design. 
Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to put this adventure design into our frame. And I like to kind of move the frame into a corner right here where like these two big axes meet. I like to just move the frame there and then I'm going to put this here. And I'm just going to, what I want to do is I want to by hand, manually, I want to center it vertically the way I want it to look. So however I want the mountains to be, how, however far down or however far up. And I just like to make sure that I like the placement. Okay, so I think that that placement looks really good. And now what I'm gonna do is select all of these things and I'm gonna go to center horizontally. And you'll notice actually that did not move. So I randomly had that centered horizontally without even realizing it. At this point, this is two separate images. So what I want to do now is I do want to attach all of these together. And you'll notice that the color changes and then you can just make whatever color you want up here in the, in the colors menu. So this is your design. This is going to cut out just like this if you were to go to the make screen. In fact, let's go and check that out. I'm gonna go ahead and just hide that particular one. This one in particular is already sized and everything the way I want it for my shirt. So I'm just gonna leave this particular one. And you'll notice down here in the layers panel when I click on it, it says detach. And that just means that all of these items should be attached together. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on make. I do have the maker three. Um, selected for today's project. You probably could do this on the joy, but you you might have, well, you would have difficulty with the frame. You could definitely do the adventure in the mountains, but you would probably have to do it row by row and then put them together on the shirt as one thing. Let's go to make. So this is what the design looks like at this time and you can see how it is all together the way we need it to be. Now, because this is HTV vinyl, we're going to mirror the design. And that's really important that you make sure that you mirror everything before you cut. And so after that, we would hit continue. And this will connect to my Maker 3. Once I'm connected to my Maker 3, then I can choose um, the iron-on. I'm just going to use this setting for everyday iron-on. However, you could go to Browse All Materials, and you'll notice that I have a huge list, and I could actually even just search at the very top. But you do have a variety of possibilities depending on what kind of iron-on that you're using. Okay, and I'm just using, like I said, the everyday iron on. So I will select that. It will give me a warning saying to make sure that my mirror is on and that my iron on material is face down, which means this shiny side is laying face down on the mat. We'll show you that in just a moment. So over here, I like to double check that the mirror is on and we have default pressure. I do have the fine point blade loaded. And in just a moment, we will be getting our mat ready, and then I will load and go. Okay, before I actually send this through the machine, I just wanted to show you that um, a couple of things. Number one, I started my vinyl up here in the top corner, and then if I peel this back, you can see that this side, compared to the front, this side is very dull, and then this side is super shiny, has a very nice shimmer to it. Um, that's the vinyl itself. And then you can see the shiny carrier sheet. So wanna make sure that you have shiny side down. And then I just used my brayer to go all over this particular sheet of vinyl. And now I will go ahead and load this into my maker and get this cut out so we can get this onto our t-shirt. Okay, so my vinyl is already cut out. And before we go to the mat and start pressing the vinyl to the shirt, I wanted to show you the heat guide. 
this is always a good thing to check before you do any um, iron-on type uh, project. So we're going to go to our home screen in Design Space. You can click on Heat Guide and it will take you to a, a new window and then you'll just come down here. This I'm going to be using the Cricut Easy Press 2 today. I'm going to select the fact that I have everyday iron-on vinyl and I am using a t-shirt that is 90% cotton but it is a poly blend so I'm going to click apply and then it'll give me instructions for the temperature and time setting for my easy press. You can also do this with a household iron. Just make sure that you monitor your project, um, that you are just, you know, noting that you're probably going to be about 30 or so seconds firm pressure and just monitor the project on your shirt. Um, since you are not 100% sure what the iron temperature is. Then it'll give you the supplies you need, the prep, the application, and then of course the care. So I like to just check this out when I'm doing some sort of iron-on project. Okay, let's head over to our overhead camera. Okay, so this is my shirt. I'm going to just set that aside for right now. Okay. And then I'm going to release the vinyl. Set aside my cutting mat. And then um, Basically, I'm looking at the design, which is here, and I'm going to just trim away all of this excess vinyl because that can be used for another project. All right, so that was nice, easy work of that. Okay, so now for weeding. And I think this is going to be a pretty easy weed. I'm just going to grab the corner here and pull off. I'm going to go around the edge. And I'm going to I'm going to clip this right here. Perfect. All right. I have really enjoyed making t-shirts lately. And um, what I like about them is that you can make them for any occasion. You can make them for any holiday. And then if you're someone like me who, you know, I don't really have a ton of t-shirts, but they are really good to have in the summer, especially, so I do a lot of hiking, I, I hang out with family and friends, and you know, I don't really need a lot of formal work clothes like I do during the school year when we're at school. Um, so I like the idea of making my own shirts. They are super fun. And I have noticed that Michael's has a really good price on shirts. You can get scoop neck. Usually you can get the scoop necks for about $2.99 a piece. And then the V-necks can be a little bit more expensive. And they do have, um, they have some long sleeves. Like they have a variety of t-shirts and they are different prices depending on what style you're getting. But if you just want a throw down t-shirt that works really well and looks actually pretty nice, uh, for $2.99, I'm not sure that you could beat that. Um, that's, to me, that's a pretty good deal for a custom t-shirt. Plus, of course, your vinyl. Okay. I'll pull all that up. And then these things here. 
So I plan on making some 4th of July shirts. My daughter is going to go to camp in August. So I will probably make a few shirts for her, whatever designs that she wants. And that'll give her some extra camp clothes and just something a little unique for her. Okay, so this is all weeded. Told, that was such an easy, that's why another reason why I chose this design. And then I just like to look and make sure that I got all of the pieces. And here is my shirt. I do need to get my easy press mat, so we'll grab that. One thing I like about V-neck shirts is that at the bottom of the V, they have this little line right here. And I, I do have t-shirt guides that I can use. I have them in my drawer, I can pull them out. Um, and that sometimes is really helpful if you're, especially if you're not sure like how far down you wanna go or something like that. But what I like about the V-necks is that you can line up the middle of your design with this line right here and it just helps make sure that your shirt is centered. So I am going to press the front of this shirt for just a few seconds. This will take out the wrinkles and any moisture that's there. To center my design, I'm actually going to take, and I'm not gonna worry about the edge of the carrier sheet. I'm gonna line up the box corners right there, and I'm just gonna kind of pinch that a little bit. Okay, so now this vinyl sheet has a crease down the middle here, and this will allow me to center that on my shirt. Before I get this put on, um, in addition to having that line, if you don't have a V-neck shirt, you just have a scoop neck or a crew neck, what you can do is take your shirt, fold it in half, and making sure that it's really flat in here, that there's no um, extra creases. And we're gonna press this and create a line down the middle of the shirt. And what this will do, not only does it help with getting the fabric ready, but it does provide a crease so that you can line up your vinyl sheet all right, so you can see this crease right here. Okay. And then I do need to make sure that I lint roll. Great. There we go. And then I'm going to take this particular final. I'm going to line up with this crease right here. And I just like to bring it down about it about an inch, inch and a half, you know, whatever looks good to me. Okay. So this look like this. This is great. And then sometimes if I'm not real sure, I will just double check that it it's about the same so that it's not, you know, grossly off. Now what we're gonna do here is we are going to press. And I think I did a pretty good job sizing that this will fit all under here. I'm gonna set that down and I'm gonna hit the little button and it's just gonna count it down for us. Okay. Okay, and then this is really, really warm. But what I want to do is I want to flip this over to the back side and just give it about another 10 to 15 seconds. And then finally, 
I'm going to remove the easy press mat and this is a glass mat so I'm just going to lay this down and allow it to cool on the glass mat okay this is really really cool it cools down so quickly when you take it off of the easy press mat this this is still warm. It is designed to hold heat and draw that in. Okay. But this looks really good. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start lifting this up and seeing if I need to repress any pieces. Hopefully everything is done all at once and we don't need to do any repressing. So far, I think this is looking so good. All right, that, this is Perfect. I don't need to do any repressing of any kind. This has laid down so nicely. I don't have any wrinkles, crinkles, or bubbling. So this turned out so well. I am super excited to be able to have a nice summer shirt and wear this on a uh, upcoming hike. This is just going to be fantastic. Okay, well, that is all for today's particular project. I hope that this video was helpful, insightful, and inspiring. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share so that you can stay um, in tune with all of the crafting projects that we have going on this summer. And until I see you next time, happy crafting. Thank you all so much for watching today. I'm so glad that you can join me at my craft table. If you're not already, I'd love to have you as a subscriber and don't forget to hit that notification bell. That way you'll know when new videos arrive. Have a great day and as always, happy crafting.